SpongeBob home console video games seem to have a clear upward trend in the early 2000s, mainly on the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. We got a new game every year or two and they just kept getting better. Big Sky Interactive brought us Spongebob Revenge of the Flying Dutchman in 2002, and despite all the crap I've said about it, it's not the worst thing out there. It was the first game to bring the world of Spongebob to 3D, and that's a huge feat, so we have to give credit where credit is due, but it does not hold up today in any way. But just a year later, Heavy Iron Studios brought us Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, a fan favorite in the Spongebob series, and for good reason. Not only did they make the world of the show playable in 3D, but they brought it to life and made a crazy fun collectathon platformer of it. You could play as Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy, and they each had unique abilities that allow for some really quality level design. And I don't just mean for a licensed game, for any game at this time. It was followed up by the Spongebob movie game, which isn't as well received as its predecessor, but it's a more linear challenge based version of it that I prefer on repeat playthroughs. Then, in 05, we got a pretty solid minigame compilation in Lights, Camera, Pants, and the following year, we got Spongebob, Creature from the Krusty Krab, the biggest mixed bag of them all. On one hand, there's some really unique ideas and wacky art styles that keep the game visually interesting the entire way through, but on the other, there's an all-around lack of direction in the gameplay that leads to all of it feeling unpolished and not as fun as it could be. I know plenty of people that like the game, and that's great, but I'm personally not a fan. And that brings us to 2007, with the release of Spongebob's Atlantis Square Pantus. This game came out at the time where the decline in the show was really starting to become apparent, with no episode making that more obvious than, well, the one this game was based on. This episode has already been beaten to death by internet reviewers like myself, so I'll do my best to keep my thoughts on it brief, but seriously, it's bad. It's Atlantis Square Pantus, a Spongebob event that's downright gigantic. I rewatched it the other night to refresh myself and was surprised by how flat out boring it was from start to finish. How did they take a concept as cool as Spongebob in the game traveling to the lost city of Atlantis and make it a snooze fest? It's honestly kinda impressive. The setup is flat out dumb. This super hidden piece of the amulet of Atlantis is like 30 steps into some cave that's right out in the open. And am I really supposed to believe the entire main cast was just hanging around this museum on this particular day? A museum, mind you, we've never seen in the show before this? But as stupid as the setup may be, it's not even the worst part about it. This episode is chocked full of musical numbers that occur every couple minutes, and not one of them isn't awful. None of them have a good beat or are catchy in the slightest, and they also really highlight how flanderized these characters have become. Arr, I'm Mr. Krabs, money, money, money. I'm Sandy, science, yeehaw! That's <laughs> so bad. I'm Squidward, aha. Uh -huh. F you, SpongeBob, I love art. I'm Patrick, uh, I can't think of anything. Hey, Peter, can you help Patrick think of something to say so the bus doesn't crash into the ground? And even the parts with Patchy the Pirate feel like super obvious filler. He's usually one of my favorite characters, but here I can't wait for him to get off the screen. But then again, that means the actual episode starts back up, and that's full of garbage filler too. So, yeah, if you couldn't tell, I really don't like this episode, but I won't let its low quality taint the game, because it deserves a fair chance. While it was released for the Game Boy Advance and DS, I'll be talking about the home console version that released on the Wii and PlayStation 2, which was developed by Blitz Games. They also developed Creature from the Krusty Krab, so this game serves as a direct sequel to it, and that gives me a good feeling about it. If they took what worked in that game and fully fleshed it out, we could have a really good game on our hands, so let's see what they ended up doing. <sighs> this was the best I could come up with, really. I get this wasn't solely made for the Wii, but this is an absolute bare minimum. There's no logo, just plain text with the game title, horrible character models, and a moving skyline in the background. And the music isn't a catchy little Spongebob jingle or something, no, it's just a bubble sound effect on loop. But if you thought that was a bad first impression, I'd like to introduce you to the main menu. A Spongebob model standing there doing a little idle animation with the game logo plastered next to him, all the while a Spongebob theme where you make straight out of a horror game plays. And you better get used to it, because it plays while you navigate every menu throughout the entire game, and it's brutal. It does speed up and get a little better after 20 seconds, but you're not going to be in these menus for that long, so you're stuck hearing the same... ...between every level. But putting that aside, the game features 14 levels, each of which falls into one of four categories. There's puzzle-oriented 3D stages, these rail shooter-esque levels, rhythm game-inspired sections, and vehicle sections. The puzzle-based levels are my personal favorites. You switch between two characters, each with a couple unique abilities, and work through a labyrinth of sorts from a top-down perspective. None of the characters can jump, which I thought would hold back these sections, but it really doesn't, it actually does the contrary. 
It allows for some way more complex puzzles that involve the use of both characters, puzzles that wouldn't really exist if you could jump. The only annoyance is that you can only control one character at a time, which means oftentimes you'll have to trek the same path twice, but it's not too big a deal. And I love that it's not just Spongebob and Patrick, you can play as Sandy once again, as well as Mr. Krabs and Squidward for the very first time. While their movesets are pretty lacking and aren't nearly as fleshed out as they are in something like Battle for Bikini Bottom, it's still great they're included to begin with, and their puzzle solving abilities really fit their characters. Except Squidward's, he has the ability to run against these treadmills, which either activate different things or allow him to reach new ground, but I've never seen him as much of a runner. He's been seen riding a bike from time to time, but as far as short distance sprinting, yeah, that's not really something we've seen from him. But Spongebob's spatula flipping, Patrick's pick up and throw, and Sandy's lassoing are very faithful to their respective characters. Mr. Krabs' has to be my favorite though, his pockets sniff out and fly toward money, allowing him to cross certain gaps, and while it can be seen as another instance of them further flanderizing his character, it literally happens in the episode the game was based on, so it's actually a really nice touch. Overall, these levels are definitely the highlight of the game, and I had quite a lot of fun with them. Next, the rail shooter levels, which are fine. You automatically move around certain areas from a first person point of view, trying to get pictures of all the different Atlantean artifacts. On the Wii, you point at these things with your controller and press A to snap the picture. You're apparently not supposed to do this though, so the guards will occasionally try to stop you, and by aiming at them and pressing B, you can shoot Krabby Patties to end their pursuit. Other tourists can be in the way of certain displays too, and you have to shoot at them to get them out of the way. But you only get 7 shots before you have to reload, which requires you to either press 1 or shake the Wii remote. It's pretty simple and functions as intended, the only thing that's a little off is that sometimes, taking pictures of the marked items won't credit you the points, despite having them in frame. While I wouldn't call these levels fun, they're inoffensive enough and at least the areas you're moving through have a lot going on, with some appreciated references to older episodes. The last one's a bit different, but it's nothing major, you play as Sandy and don't take any pictures. Instead, you shoot ping pong balls at waves of enemies and can now take cover, it's still on rail though and it doesn't feel a whole lot different than the others. The gameplay I refuse to defend, however, are the rhythm game clones, because these are bad, which I guess also makes them the most faithful to the episode, in more ways than one. There were tons of songs throughout, so it makes sense why they included these sections in the game, but there's no excuse for them being this boring. None of the songs are even from the episode, which I'd be fine with if the replacements were better, but they aren't. They're super generic beats, and sometimes the button presses don't even time out right with them, which makes them even worse. I'll give this first level credit, each character had a short tune to fuel the bus that was pretty okay, but every level after it just has super boring backgrounds, generic music, and unsynced button presses. They're terrible! The characters just walk silently and blurt out lines here and there that you've heard four times already, and they're way out of context. It's a good thing most of the characters have their proper voices though, because if they didn't, I wouldn't be able to tolerate it. I classified the remainder of stages as vehicle sections for the sake of simplicity, but there's two types. The first has you take control of an ice cream tank as plankton and work through mostly linear areas, wiping on other tanks and activating different buttons to progress further, eventually reaching Spongebob & Co. The other has you drive the Atlantis bus on the outskirts of the city and attempt to repair it by collecting these tool bags. This thing only controls slightly differently than the tank, the steering is a bit easier and you have a small jump that lets you better avoid some obstacles and fly higher off ramps. The area that you're driving through is a bit more open-ended too, but it's still very easy to navigate and it really only takes a couple minutes to beat. And it's a similar story with a lot of these levels, about half take around 5 minutes and the longer ones never take more than 20. Not only that, the game encourages you to beat them as fast as possible. Each level has a focus on timely completion, there's no time limit, but you get a rank depending on how quick you finish. But you can also subtract from your total time by collecting these clocks, destroying enemies, and things like that, which is handy, but isn't done properly. This section didn't take me 4 seconds to beat, it took a few minutes, but my score says otherwise. You can give players more time when there's a time limit, but if total time determines the score, maybe set time to an amount of points, the lower the better, and have these pickups add to the score. That way you can still see how quickly you're beating the levels and rank players effectively, but that's just an idea. The rhythm stages are the only exception, those rankings are dependent on how many button presses you miss. With not a lot of content and a focus on beating things quickly, these 14 levels can be completed in a matter of a couple hours, which is fine with me. It's a game based on a television special, it shouldn't be super long, and the developers understood that and did the best they could with it. The story follows the events of the episode to a T, except it starts with Plankton in the tank and treats the rest of the story like a flashback, which I don't like, but it's nothing major. While the story does suck, the episode was based on sucks too, so you can't blame the game for that, they did exactly what the show did. And with all the strange things that happened in the special, the multiple playstyles make sense and actually work pretty alright. I don't really know how you'd make a game based on this plot without having gameplay jump all over the place, and they went in with that intention and ran with it. 
Giving all the levels a ranking system and making them easily replayable on this world map was such a good idea and makes them feel like separate adventures, despite being similar to others. Creature from the Krusty Krab would jump from idea to idea so quickly, before one was fully developed, a new one would show up and once you got it down, poof, it was gone and you were doing something else. I really wish they took what worked in that game and further developed it to make it the centerpiece of this game, but I get why they didn't. The last game was stupid ambitious, and this game tried to play it a lot more safe, which is an approach that works for it, it's a lot easier to master and makes the variety way more manageable. I wouldn't say I prefer this game to Creature from the Krusty Krab though, they both have their fair share of mundane moments, but it definitely has much higher highs. The 3D Spongebob and Patrick gameplay is pretty solid in design, and I definitely had more fun there than I did at any moment this time around. It is super close though, and I'm not trying to put this game down at all. For what it's worth, it's fine, and it definitely far surpasses the episode it was based on. In my licensed game tier list, I'd place this in the D tier, which is mediocre on the high end and pretty bad on the low end. But I'd place it right here, below Creature from the Krusty Krab for reasons I just explained, and higher than Lights, Camera, Pants, because this game's levels are much higher quality than the basic minigame selection in that game. 